In this video, we're going to learn about for loops in C++. For loops are a type of loop control structure that allow us to repeat the execution of a block of code. When we create loops to solve problems, very often we use a counter variable to help us manage the execution of the loop. A for loop allows us to put all the information relevant to how a counter variable works on the same line, so we can see it all at once and more easily understand how the loop is going to work. So let's first create a basic example of a while loop that uses a counter variable. So we'll have int i to declare our counter variable i, then we'll initialize i to the value 1. Next we'll make a while loop with the condition i is less than or equal to 5. So this loop is going to continue to execute so long as i is less than or equal to 5. In the body of the loop, we'll do some work. In this case here, we're just going to output i. So we'll have C out i colon followed by the actual value of i itself and then an end line. Then we're going to update our counter variable i. We're going to increment it by one. We'll have i plus plus here. So this loop body is going to execute five times and i is going to go from one to five. We can save, compile and run the program and we'll get i from one to five as our output. So this type of loop is very typical, where we have a counter variable that we initialize to some value. We have a condition that involves the counter variable, where we're checking to see if the counter variable maybe exceeds some value. Then we have an update step, where we modify the counter variable. For loops are purpose built for these types of situations. A for loop will put all this information on one line. That can be very useful because sometimes we'll have a large while loop. So for example, let's imagine that the body of a while loop is doing lots of work. Let's imagine it's very big, like this. I'm going to have to scroll around to actually see where the counter variable is initialized, where the condition is, and where the counter variable is updated. With a for loop, it's gonna put all of this relevant information on one line. That can improve the readability of our code by making it easier to see what's going to happen in our loop. So let's create an equivalent for loop. We'll have for, open bracket, close bracket. Now in these brackets, we're actually gonna put more than just the loop condition. We're gonna have three statements and we're gonna separate them by semicolons. The first statement is going to be the initialization statement. Its job is to set up any counter variables. So we'll have int i is equal to one to declare and initialize the counter variable i to one. Then we'll have semicolon to separate the statements. The next statement is the condition. We'll have i is less than or equal to five. And just like with a while loop, the loop is going to stop when this condition is false. It's going to continue when it's true. Finally, we'll have our update statement. The update statement has the job of updating any counter variables. So we'll have here i plus plus to update i and increment it by one. Then in the loop body, We'll output i with c out, i colon, and then the value of i, and then end line. And this here is equivalent to the while loop above it in terms of how it's going to function. We could actually comment out this loop here, and then run our program using this new for loop. And if we save, compile, and run it, we'll get the exact same result as before. We'll get i from 1 to 5. But the idea with a for loop like this is that it's going to make our code easier to read by putting all the relevant information for how our counter variable works on the same line. So how the counter variable is initialized, the condition that's checked involving the counter variable, and how the counter variable is updated. And that's the idea with a for loop. That's why we would bother to use a for loop instead of a while loop. Now with a while loop, it is very explicit when things are going to happen and I find sometimes this can be tricky for new programmers to understand. So with this while loop here, it's very clear that this initialization statement is going to execute first. It's easier visibly to see that this condition is going to be evaluated next because it occurs after the initialization statement. We can tell that this update statement is going to occur at the end of each loop body. Whereas with the for loop, it might seem less explicit when exactly these statements are going to execute in particular, this update statement. So let's try to make that more clear. If we do have a for loop, we're going to have these parts. 
we'll have the initialization statement. We'll just call that init. Then we'll have the condition. Then we'll have the update statement. We'll also have the body of the loop as well. So a for loop is going to execute in this order. First, we're going to have the initialization statement execute. And that initialization statement is only going to execute once. After that, the condition is going to be evaluated. And if the condition is false, the loop is going to stop. So once the condition is false, the loop is going to stop. And execution is going to go down below the loop. After the condition, the body of the loop is going to execute. So next, we would have the body. After the body of the loop executes, the update statement is going to execute. So we'll have update. After the update statement is executed, the condition is going to be checked again. So it's at this point that the loop is really going to loop and loop back to the condition. So the control flow is going to look like this. After update, we go back to the condition like this. And the loop is going to continue in this fashion until the condition is false. And so I wanted to highlight this because it's not always obvious to beginners when exactly these statements in the for loop are going to execute relative to each other. But this is the order, and this is what the control flow is going to look like. So with this for loop up here, first the initialization statement is going to execute. Then this condition is going to be checked. Then the loop body is going to execute. Then this update statement is going to be executed. Then the condition will be checked again. Then the body will execute. Then the update statement will execute. Then the condition will be checked. And on and on until the loop stops when the condition is false. We can use the break and continue keywords to modify the normal behavior of a for loop. So for example, if here we had if i is equal to three, break. What this is going to do is stop the loop prematurely. It's going to stop the loop when i equals three. So break is going to stop the loop and bring control flow out here below the for loop. So if we save, compile, and run the program, this time we only get i from one to three. And that's because once i was equal to three, break caused the loop to stop. That's the break keyword. There's also a keyword called continue. And the continue keyword can be used to skip over executing the remainder of the loop body. So for example, if up here we had if i is equal to three, continue. What this will do is skip over the remainder of the loop body. In this case, the remainder of the loop body is just a statement here. But still, when i is equal to three, we're not going to execute the statement. It's going to be skipped over. Instead, control flow is going to go up here to the update statement. So if we save, compile, and run the program, we get i is one, i is two, and then i is four and i is five. Now the loop did execute when i was three. This loop body did run, but the first statement here checks to see if i is equal to three. And because it is, we continue. That's going to skip over the rest of the loop body and control flow is going to go here. We increment i by one, i is now four, and the loop continues as normal. So we can also use the continue keyword with a for loop. The continue and break keywords can sometimes make loops more difficult to understand. So we do need to be a little bit careful about when and how we use them. Now, even though this example here is the typical way in which a for loop is used, there's nothing stopping us from using a for loop in different ways. So for example, we could modify the counter variable in the loop body. We could have I plus plus here. And now we're going to increment I twice once here in the update statement. And then once here in the loop body. And now if we save compile and run the program, we get I is one, I is three and I is five because I is effectively incrementing by two with each loop iteration. We could also leave this statement here blank. We could have nothing here. We could initialize I here to one. 
This will also work. We could save, compile, and run our program, and we get the same result as before. We could also leave the update statement blank as well. We could save, compile, and run the program, and it's still going to work. So we don't need to use a for loop in the typical way that it's expected to use a for loop. Notably, we can also declare and initialize multiple counter variables. We can also update multiple counter variables as well. So for example, we could have here int i is equal to zero, and then comma j is equal to one. Then here in the update step, we could have i plus plus to increment i by one, and then j plus equals five to increment j by five. Here we could output j. So we could see j with each loop iteration as well. So we'll have comma j colon, and then we'll output j here as well. So we can see its value with each loop iteration. Now if we save, compile, and run the program, we're going to get i from zero to five, and j is gonna go from one to 26. And there's nothing stopping us from putting the other counter variable in the condition as well. So we could have i is less than or equal to five, and, and j is less than or equal to 20. Then if we save, compile, and run the program, we're going to see that the loop stops earlier now. And that's because we've modified the loop condition we now also stop the loop if j exceeds 20. There is another type of for loop in C++ called a range-based for loop. I've made a separate video on that type of for loop, and I'll link to that video in the description. So this is how we can use for loops in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.